everyone for being here. Good afternoon. A beautiful day in Seattle and a lot to be thankful. Terry Becerra, Congresswoman Jayapel, and Executive Constantine, and some of the additional supporters and community-based organizations, heroes that you're going to be hearing from today. Um, a number of exciting things that we can announce today. Number one, many of you were here when we opened this facility, and it was pretty dire then because we had so few doses of vaccine. But kind of like Field of Dreams, we knew if we build it and were persistent, and had the right advocates, it would come. Um, I want to thank you, Mr. Secretary, for your efforts to for HHS to give direct dosages to King County Public Health in King County so that that made our surge more possible. I want to thank Congresswoman Jayapal for her uh, unfailing and such high energy advocacy for the city of Seattle and the rest of her district on an ongoing basis, but particularly throughout this pandemic. It was only possible with her help and Patty Murray's help. I also want to thank Dow Constantine for just being a stalwart partner. We are a really exciting threshold. Um, over 60% of Seattle residents eligible for vaccines have received their first dose at least. That's a great threshold. When we opened our facilities, I said I wanted to be the first city in America to get fully vaccinated, to get 70% of people eligible. We are so close. There's only one city that we know is ahead of us, and that's San Francisco. So if there's no other reason to get your vaccination, get your vaccination so we can beat San Francisco. Um, we also know that our vaccine distribution has been one of the most equitable in the nation. And you're going to hear from two of our great partners in that. Um, and the reason why we are so successful is because of our community-based organizations who have made sure they've not only advocated for their communities, but have been there to support us in getting people vaccinated. Um, and we continue to, I think, be one of the leaders in the nation to make sure a disproportionate number of our vaccines are going into black and brown arms because we're intentional about making sure the vaccine goes to the places and the communities that have been most at risk and most excluded from the system. We still have walk-ups. So right here at Rainier Beach, there's no more beautiful vaccination spot in the country. If you're 60 or older, you can walk up without an appointment, you'll get vaccinated. And there's more. If you bring the person that's 60 and older and you haven't been vaccinated, you can get vaccinated. We also are going to try to extend on a pilot our evening hours at a few locations here in West Seattle because we know there's people who are working during the day and can't get to one of our sites for vaccination. So we want to make it as easy as possible. I can't talk about vaccinations without talking about our Seattle Fire Department. They have been so remarkable since the beginning of this pandemic. First setting up a national leading testing program, but then in vaccinations, going to our senior adult homes, going to our low income homes, setting up these sites. And so Chief Scoggins, a particular thanks to you for your work and for all the work of the men and women of the fire department. And because we got to get everyone vaccinated, we're going to be innovative and creative about how we do it. And not just joining with community-based organizations, going to places where people are. So this weekend, we're going to try something new. If you're going to the Sounders game and you haven't been vaccinated, we will have walk-up vaccinations with the Seattle Fire Department at the Sounder games. Make sure you bring your ID. Um, and we're going to try everything we can. And so with that, I want to thank everyone for being here again. Thank the secretary particularly for all his efforts. Congratulate him on his work. We're lucky to have someone in that role who's not just an exceptional leader, but who understands the challenges that actually face cities, particularly cities on the West Coast. So we, we know that we'll have a great partnership throughout the Biden administration with him. And with that, I'll turn this over to Chief Scoggins. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Harold Scoggins, Fire Chief of the Seattle Fire Department. I'd like to thank the mayor for her ongoing leadership in, during this pandemic. It's truly made a difference. And i also like to thank our firefighters who are boots on the ground every single day serving the community. It was June 5th of 2020 when we opened our first testing site. And now we have four of them, or we had four of them we were operating. Over 735,000 people have been tested 
at our testing sites. And now since January 14th, our Seattle firefighters have been doing vaccinations. And to date, over 88,000 vaccinations have been given. And we've, I think, done the hard work. That's really important. Our mobile vaccination teams, and we've had four of them working. Some of you saw pictures when they were out in the snow. They visited over 220 different locations delivering the vaccinations. So as the mayor mentioned, you know, we're gonna be doing a couple of things. So next week, Tuesday, May 4th, right here, this site is gonna be open until 7.30 in the evening, trying to get those folks who work during the day. So we're gonna test that out and see if we can get people here. And our West Seattle site on Wednesday, May 5th, it's gonna be open until 7.30 in the evening. That's really important because the mayor mentioned our, our new programs. If you're 60 or older, you can actually just walk up and we're gonna figure out a way to get you vaccinated. We have enough doses. And if you're 16 or older, and you bring someone who's 60 or older, no appointment needed, we're also gonna take care of you there. And as the mayor mentioned, we're getting creative. We'll be at the Sounders game, go Sounders, rooting for them, trying to get the win. But our firefighters are gonna be there, boots on the ground, in two separate locations, ready to vaccinate people in that space also. So we're really trying to meet people where they are to deliver the vaccinations in, in, a, in just an equitable way and get our community reopened. We're, we're getting really close. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're really excited about where we're going. So next, I, I would like to bring up Executive Dow Constantine to um, address the group. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chief. Uh, and thanks to everyone for being here today. I especially want to thank Secretary Becerra for being here as well uh, and for getting a chance to see uh, up close uh, what a coordinated whole of community response looks like. You know, the partnerships across King County, partnerships between cities, between first responders, between public and private health systems uh, have just been remarkable. We have all really been pulling together to work together to defeat this pandemic. And because we have worked together, we're making remarkable progress. Uh, this week, we, we crossed a couple milestones, and I want to tell you about them uh, countywide. Uh, for the first time, we received more than 200,000 doses of vaccine in this county. That is more than double what we had been getting by, in mid-March. And with those new doses and our progress, more than half of the people of King County, not just of the adults, more than half of the entire population of King County, uh, when, you, when you count it all together, has had one dose of vaccine. And more than 40% of people, uh, 750,000 uh, of those eligible are now fully vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Our remarkable progress would not have been possible without the leadership of the Biden administration. This has been like night and day. Having lived through a year of this, tried to lead this jurisdiction through a year of this without a whole lot of help coming from the White House, without really a roadmap, to have a strong federal partner has made all the difference. And I wanna thank Secretary Becerra again on behalf of everyone in King County for supporting our efforts. Now that incredible effort uh, that's happening here in Seattle and at clinics all across King County uh, is, is really uh, a product of an entire community deciding that we are going to get through this and get through it together. Earlier this week, in fact, uh, at the far other end of the county, in the north end, we were able to open with the University of Washington uh, a clinic in Shoreline uh, to serve communities uh, across the north tier of King County. And earlier, uh, together with our public health uh, clinics uh, on the east side and South King County, uh, we were able to announce that we have been able to provide vaccines because of this increase in, in, uh, in the number of doses we're getting to every single provider in the county that has requested them. Large providers, mass vac sites, but also small pharmacies and, and individual health providers who have constituencies that they can bring in and get vaccinated, people who might not have been connected to other systems. And it's never been more important than it is now to get to a clinic. You've heard me over the last few weeks. You're gonna hear me again and again in the coming days. This is a race between the vaccine and the virus. 
And right now the virus is catching back up. Yes, we're having great success getting shots in arms, but these new variants, they're, they're more contagious and they have more severe impacts. So the number of infections is still going up, even though the number of people who've been vaccinated is going up. The number of people being hospitalized, particularly those 16 to 34, is increasing. I would just remind everyone what we've been telling you all along, which is please wear a mask, don't be cooped up with those you don't live with, and please, please, please stay home if you're sick. And most important now, get to a clinic and get your shot. The virus in America, the first outbreak, started right here in King County, right across this lake in a Kirkland nursing home. We were hit first, but this community worked together and listened to science, and we successfully went from being the epicenter of the outbreak to having the lowest rate of infection and death of any major jurisdiction in this country. It is something that truly can be credited to all the people of King County. We know how to beat the virus. And with the incredible vaccines that we have, we have a good tool to do that, but it's on every single one of us to do their part. Nobody else can get your vaccine for you. You've got to step up. Uh, and that's why I'm pleased to announce today that our mass vaccin vaccination clinics in Auburn and in Kent are available for walk-up appointments. If you need to go get a shot, if you find yourself with some time, if you haven't made an appointment, we are setting aside a thousand shots at each one of those clinics for you. So just go there and get those shots. Uh, it will help us bring closer the end of this pandemic for everyone. Let's all do our part and let's win this one for King County. And now, speaking of the providers who are helping get the shots out, uh, one of our strong partners has been the International Community Health Services, and I'd like to introduce the CEO of that great community organization, Teresita Fateola. Thank you so much, uh, County Executive Dow. Hang on. I'm so used to being with a, with a mask that it's hard for me to think about being without it. Uh, welcome to Secretary Bircera and uh, to the mayor and council member Jayapal. I'm so honored to be here with you. And you've got your vaccine warrior team right here. So, so proud to be here. International Community Health Services is a federally qualified health center providing affordable quality medical, dental, and behavioral health services to everyone, regardless of status. Our patients are predominantly low income and from communities of color, and we provide them with wraparound service that helps them with their housing, with their food, with their education access, and anything else that they would need to make their life better. Interesting that Executive Dow referred to uh, the first uh, COVID-19 positive case that we had here in King County, which was associated with a nursing home in Kirkland. ICHS was the first health center in the entire country among over 1,400 health centers to have its first positive case, and that case was associated with that nursing home, the epicenter for not just our state, but the country for several months. It was very difficult in those days because there was very little guidance and we are so fortunate that we have top flight staff, top flight providers who figured out what was going on and made sure that our staff had the appropriate PPE. And since then, our community health center has pivoted repeatedly to be able to provide care for our community for, against COVID-19. We ramped up drive up testing, we provided care to those who are not COVID positive or even those COVID positive but recovering from home through telehealth and telephone. We provided food, we delivered medication, other life essentials to patients, their families, and other community members to be part of the solution, part of that front line against COVID. And today we are very active vaccinators. In January this year, ICHS was a fierce advocate to make sure that vaccines were available, rare, 
scars vaccines were available to our communities which were disproportionately affected. And I hate to admit it, but the, a couple of the elected officials here got a lot of pestering calls from me. <laughs> but we were the better for it because we started to get supply. But what really helped out ICHS and the communities that we serve is that Secretary Bracera and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services started to send dedicated vaccines direct from the federal government to community health centers. ICHS was one of the first 25 in the entire country that received those doses specifically to address those communities who are falling through the cracks, the communities who are most disproportionately affected, communities of color. We are working hard and fast to make sure that we're vaccinating people as fast as possible. We have a couple of different strategies. We have clinic-based vaccination sites in Holly Park, which is not too far from here, Chinatown International District, Bellevue, and Shoreline. We also have community pop-up sites with partners so that we can get out there and make sure no one is falling through the cracks. We have had partners like affordable housing for seniors, such as Wisteria Manor, faith-based groups like Betsuin Buddhist Temple, the Muslim Community and Neighborhood Association, and the Evangelical Chinese Church, and community groups like Skipda and El Centro de la Raza, who is present here today. Language, the internet, and convenience became barriers of the past. And as you heard today, with our mobility, with the mobility of our vaccine warriors, we are making sure that accessibility to all is possible. So far, ICHS has vaccinated over 22,000 people against COVID-19. We've educated communities about vaccine safety, and we are mobilized now to address vaccine hesitation more and more. And we've conducted over 85,000 tests, and we continue to provide care, not just to those who are concerned or affected by COVID, but also to all of our patients whose health has deteriorated, whether it's medical, dental, or behavioral health because of COVID-19. So those, to those who are still waiting, to those who want to see how this is going, we urge you to get vaccinated. There are enough supply to vaccinate those people who want to get vaccinated. And if you've been vaccinated, I urge you to get five other people to get vaccinated. Three vaccine brands are readily available. So, you know, Americans want choices all the time. Hey, now you've got flavors, right? <laughs> Three different vaccines. You can no longer say that it is inconvenient because not only can you get it through the fire department, through mass vaccination sites, through community health centers, through hospitals, you can go to your grocery store, you can go to your drug store. Location options are, uh, are always around. And if you're interested in finding about, about where they are, little plug for City of Seattle, www.seattle.gov. And then, of course, ICHS, www.ichs.com for vaccinations for a more intimate experience than a mass vaccine site. Again, this is a race against COVID and its variants. So we need to win the race. One thing for sure, healthcare is a human right. It is my privilege to be able to introduce someone who is fighting to make sure every single one of us has access to health care. So I introduce to you my Congresswoman, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Thank you so much, Teresita, for the incredible work that you have always done. I am so proud of our community health centers because these are the places where people know and trust their folks at the community health centers. 
they know they can go there and they are going to be provided with culturally relevant, appropriate information and everything that they need to really make them feel at home. So I'm grateful to you and so not surprised at all that you were one of the first 25. Let me just start by saying, Mr. Secretary, it is such a pleasure and privilege to welcome you to Seattle. Um, you are standing now in what is the most diverse zip code in the country. I want you to know that because, because you have spent your life fighting for diverse communities and we are just so proud to have you as our secretary and we know that you are going to do incredible things for us. Mayor, I've told you this privately, I've got to say it publicly, I am so proud of your leadership on this COVID-19 response. It has been phenomenal. We were able to get testing far earlier than so many of our other cities. In fact, we had a little friendly competition with Oregon, um, and I had to tell my sister to cross the border and come to Vancouver to get her test because <laughs> she couldn't get it in Oregon. I'm going to hear about this, I'm sure, from my colleagues. But um, you have really done a phenomenal job. And, Chief, um, I have been through the sites, and I am so grateful to the fire department, to, to all of the individuals who are helping to make this happen for us. Um, it has been remarkable to watch. I'm grateful. Um, Executive Constantine, we live in a state where we have a phenomenal governor, we have a phenomenal executive, we have a phenomenal mayor, we have a phenomenal public health service. In spite of disinvestment from the federal government over the years, not now, not while we're on the watch, but before, um, we have continued to invest in our public health services. And King County Public Health, uh, King County Seattle Public Health is a remarkable example of that. To our warriors on the front lines, and you're going to hear from uh, two more, um, we couldn't be more grateful for representing our communities and for fighting for our communities. There is no way that we can beat this virus without our nonprofit partners, without our community health centers, without all the people that are part and parcel of helping communities to come in and understand what they need to do. You heard that Seattle was hit first and hit hard. In fact, I remember going to talk to the speaker with my colleague Susan Del Bene. The nursing home was actually in her district and advocating hard for some immediate resources. You know, at that time, we thought this may be just an isolated incident. Maybe it wasn't going to happen everywhere else. But a lot of people across the country learned from Seattle and learned from our region. A lot of people lost loved ones. A lot of people lost jobs. A lot of people lost hope, felt like a long, dark tunnel. And today, we are here in the light. And we're here in the light because there has been a concerted effort by government to work for the people. Government at every level, starting with the President of the United States and starting with the Congress. And I'm so proud to tell you that when we passed the American Rescue Plan, one of the top priorities in the rescue plan in that $1.9 trillion package that Congress passed in a remarkably quick amount of time. And the Secretary knows because he served in Congress and he knows that things are hard to move through the process. But in a record amount of time, we passed the rescue plan. We put $20 billion into vaccines so that we could get the vaccines out, distribute them. The President immediately got to work with the Defense Production Act. And of course, the rescue plan put money in people's pockets, put shots in people's arms, got kids back in school, and made sure that people could have hope again, that small businesses could have help. And all of this is part of our recovery and our coming out back into the light. We have, in this country now, put, put out 200 million shots in just 100 days. 200 million shots in just 100 days. Phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal achievement. And the focus on equity, which you all know, having led the largest immigrant rights office, having established the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs at the city of Seattle, we might have done that before San Francisco. <laughs> I'll have to go back and check. Um, but that was a big part of the equity efforts in the city that the mayor's been committed to, the executive's been committed to, to make sure that our communities of color, our low-income communities, knew and had access. And so at Lumen Field, here in the various sites, you see different languages. You see the ability for people to get culturally competent care. And of course, it, with, through our community partners, that has been a very, very important piece. So we are at the precipice of coming out, but we're not out. 
I just came back recently from India. That is where my parents live. Most of you know that I uh, am an immigrant, came to the United States when I was 16 years old, and my parents still live in India. And both of my parents got COVID. They had gotten their first shot of the vaccine four weeks before, and it probably saved their lives. Vaccines save lives. They got COVID. They were in the hospital in the ICU. My dad had to get oxygen, but they're home and recuperating. And I don't think that that would be true if they hadn't gotten the first shot of the vaccine. I really don't. I think they may not be here but for that because they're 80 and 90 years old. So all I can say to you is get the shot as quickly as you can. For months now, we've been saying you've got to sign up for appointments. You, you, you have to wait your turn. You have to wait your age group. That is not the case anymore because we are now creating the supply that we need so that every person can get a vaccine. And if you're concerned about, we were just, we were just speaking about the fact that people talk about vaccine hesitation in communities of color. It is not actually hesitation. It is largely lack of access. And it's a historical understanding that communities of color have been left out and not catered to. That's not the case now. We are changing that narrative. And so we need everybody's help to go out there to get vaccinated and to understand that this is the sunshine, the light, the water. It's the hope that we have that we can come back and create that just and equitable future that we have all been fighting for for so long. So um, I'm grateful, Secretary Becerra, for the tremendous work that you've already done to help quickly get our vaccines to us here in Seattle. And I know that we are going to continue to do everything we can to make healthcare in this country a human right. So with that, it is my deep pleasure and privilege to introduce a good, good friend from my days of immigrant rights organizing, um, Miguel uh, Maestas, who is the housing, and I have to look at your title because you have a new title since I, since I worked to get with you, the Housing and Economic Development Director at one of the most beloved community organizations in Seattle, El Centro de la Raza. Thank you so much, Miguel, for all of the work that El Centro is doing. Thank you so much, Representative Jayapal. Good afternoon. On behalf of our executive director, Estela Ortega, and everyone at El Centro de la Raza, we are honored to be here today with such a distinguished group of speakers. El Centro de la Raza, which we translate as the center for people of all races, has been one of the places where people can get vaccinated for COVID-19. Because vac vaccine pop-ups are happening with partners like the Seattle Fire, Fire Department and Chief Scoggins and other health and community-based organizations like HCIS, El Centro is happy to share that so far we have held 11 pop-up vaccine events and, and we will continue to hold vaccine events to ensure um, everyone, especially the most vulnerable members of our community, have access to the vaccine. So far, 1,015 people have, been, have received at least the first vaccine so far at El Centro events. We have been having about one pop-up a week, and next week we will have two vaccine events. As we all know, we have all seen how the COVID-19 pandemic has laid bare racial disparities. Black, Indigenous, Latino, people of color, and low-income communities have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic, both by the percentage of people infected and by the economic impact. The most recent Seattle King County data continues to show pronounced racial inequities among COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. That's why it's so important that everyone in our, that we continue to um, reach out and make sure that these vaccines are getting into vulnerable communities. As everyone in our state became eligible for the vaccine on April 15th, it continues to be important that equity-centered vaccine distribution is a priority. And a key part of that strategy is to overcome racial and economic disparities and to ensure that vulnerable people are vaccinated and we all overcome this pandemic together. Community-based organizations like ours are trusted places where many people feel more comfortable to get the vaccine. Trusted providers are key to overcoming these racial and economic disparities. 
We need to make sure that we continue to support community-based pop-ups because we know that there are still many people that need to be vaccinated and community-based organizations are playing an important role. We all must continue to share the importance of getting vaccinated. It is about saving lives. Getting vaccinated keeps ourselves, our families, our community safe and healthy. In closing, I want to share that anyone who wants an appointment can go to the city's website or call the city and get a vaccination appointment this, this week. Also next week on May 4th and May 6th, El Centro will hold vac vaccine events as well. Thank you all so much. Mil gracias. It is now my honor to introduce Secretary Javier Becerra. Secretary Becerra is the 25th Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services and the first Latino to hold the office in the history of the United States. Secretary Becerra served 12 terms, <laughs> served 12 terms in Congress as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. And throughout his career, the Secretary has made it his priority to ensure that Americans have access to the affordable health care they need to survive and thrive. From his early days as a legal advocate representing individuals with mental illness, to his role as the Attorney General of the State of California. Welcome, Secretary Becerra. Thank you. Miguel, thank you. And before I speak, Kathy, I think we were going to have you speak as well. <laughs> so let me have Kathy Wilmore say some words as well. She is here representing fathers and sons together. I want to make sure that the work that she has done with her organization gets the tribute it needs as well. So Kathy, let me have you say some words first. Thank you so much. Thank you for recognizing fathers and sons together. We are often known by FAST, our acronym. And welcome, Secretary, to Rainier Beach. <laughs> My name is Kathy Wilmore. My incredible husband, Larry Wilmore, and I are the co-executive directors and founders of FAST and have served in this capacity for 10 years. We purchased our home in Rainier Beach in 1994, where we have raised our two amazing sons, Lawrence and Lincoln. Rainier Beach is our home and our community. As the pandemic has devastated our nation, our lives have truly been shaken. FAST quickly readjusted our programming and efforts to support our community however we could. We responded to the food insecurities by partnering with other organizations like Southeast Youth and Family Services, Safeway, and Ascendant to provide weekly family care packages, including food, cleaning supplies, bleach, and the infamous toilet paper. <laughs> We also hosted a fun event we called Holiday at the Beach, a drive-through toy giveaway, where we also gave out supplies and tried to spread a little joy and happiness with a drive-through Santa. So when we heard about the high prevalence of COVID-19 in Rainier Beach and how it, it had affected our BIPOC elders, we responded because we care. We knew that we had to get the members of our community vaccinated and protected. We signed up hundreds to get vaccinated and had a blast at hearing from families who called us after receiving their shots and cheered, I did it. We continued to encourage the members of our community to get vaccinated by visiting seattle.gov and scheduling an appointment. We would like to thank Mayor Durkin and her team our city council member, Tammy Morales, King County Council member, Gramai Zahale, the Department of Neighborhood, and the amazing Seattle Neighborhood Group, and the Rainier Beach, a beautiful safe place for youth initiative for their continued focus on serving our community. We also want to thank our wonderful volunteers, Jennifer Paisler, our board of directors, and all of the FAST champions for change who responded to our call to action this has definitely been a collective, a collaborative effort. Imagine what fathers and sons together could do if we were fully funded. Imagine the wonderful programs and services we could offer, like the first 
FAST Resource and Outreach Center, or FAST Rock. We look forward to serving our community for many years to come with your support. Thank you so much for your time. Well, I'd like to begin by thanking the people of Seattle for letting me come visit. Every time I ask about the reasons for the success, I end up getting the same answer. The source of that success always points to one place and one person, Mayor Durkin, everything, every time. Why are we succeeding so much? Mayor Durkin. Why have we had such uh, success getting folks vaccinated? Mayor Durkin. And working with County Executive Constantine, I think it's a dynamic duo that the city and the county are working so well together. And so we owe them a great deal of gratitude. Chief, I want to just mention to you that uh, every time you find somebody being saved or someone being helped, somehow there's a firefighter behind it. And uh, so much so that I think, I think Captain Woolsey was telling me she'd like to have permanent assignment here to this particular site. Uh, she, I think she likes the, the lake in the background. And so <laughs> Captain Woolsey had, was a great tour guide. And uh, I, I have a feeling that uh, the work that she and all of her colleagues in the fire department have done here has really helped save a lot of lives. And so if you will, Chief, communicate to the men and women of your de fire department, we, we thank you for what you do. Uh, Teresita said it best. You've got the warriors here. And um, although those are the San Francisco warriors, I won't talk about that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it is great to be able to see this team in action. Team Seattle has done phenomenal work from the very first day that we started to learn more about this pandemic to today. And, and I will tell you that President Biden and the Biden administration would love nothing more than to say that we've earned a spot on Team Seattle to help with the vaccination of the people who live and make this home. We want everyone to know that we want to, whatever it is, if you want us to block, catch, pass, we're ready. We want to be part of this team. And I send that message from Washington, D.C., because the president is serious. He was serious with the American Rescue Plan. And here's where we have to stop for just a moment, because we keep talking about this as if it was a done deal. The American Rescue Plan was far from a done deal. The president put real muscle behind it. But here, I think you have to thank your representative, Representative Jerry Paul, for the work that she did to make sure that at the end of the day, we had the American Rescue Plan for all Americans. And so, Congress member, we thank you for the work that you and your colleagues, many of my former colleagues did. But it is great to see that you have representation that's working so hard for you. Uh, I will tell you that what I've seen in the last day and a half of visiting here in Seattle is impressive. Still have work to do. I've seen how some of the numbers are creeping up a little bit uh, on COVID and the cases, we, we want to keep it down. And so the mask is important. Please, let, let's continue to be safe, not just for ourselves, but for our families, our loved ones, for our neighbors, the people we call friends. We, we have an obligation to do this for each other. And please, as you've just heard from this team of warriors, the vaccine's here. You can get right through. We need you to come through. But we're going to be part of this team. We're not done. The, the Biden administration understands. We still have things to do with you. We want to make sure the supply is there. We want to make sure it's safe. We want to make sure we coordinate it. And by God, we're going to make sure that we reach out to those marginalized communities that so often have been left behind. It is time for everyone, not just in the Seattle area, but all across America knows that we're not going to miss you. Just because of your zip code, we are not going to miss you. And so the message should go out loud and clear. The president is very serious. And if you didn't think he was, you should have heard him last night. Because right. we're, we're not done. We're not done. And if we can get this American Families Plan done with the American Jobs Plan, the way we got the American Rescue Plan done, and that's where we're going to look at the muscle of the, the member of Congress who represents this area to get that done, I will tell you that we will bring America fully back. And we will be able to put this up on a picture frame and say those were the days. The kids or your grandkids will be will ask you, Grandma, Grandpa, what the heck is that? And we'll be able to say, we tackled that baby. It was called COVID-19, and we did it for all America. But we did it because we have a leader 
named Joe Biden, who understands we do it for America. Thank you all very much for what you do. What a pleasure to be here with you and part of this team. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And again, great thanks to Kathy, to Teresita Miguel, because they, they and the other community-based organizations, we couldn't be here without them. Um, I would take a few questions, but I do want to emphasize two things. Um, one, I, I got the most recent numbers. We are at 67% of Seattle residents have gotten at least their first vaccination. Let's push that up. Um, and we will put you on Team Seattle for the rest of the term. I was on a call last night after the president's speech and a reporter asked me, he said, well, what has changed for cities since the election of this president? And the short answer is everything. Um, and last night it started with, thank you, Madam Speaker and Madam Vice President. Uh, it was amazing. So we'll take a few questions um, for the secretary, probably predominantly for any of us who are up here. We've tamed them. No questions. There are questions. question for you is, how, how are you going to gauge success with some of these pilot projects that we're announcing today in terms of whether there's going to be successful or not, or even expanding into other opportunities for um, some of the pilot projects to reach other communities? Great. The question was, how will we gauge success for some of the pilot programs we've said, extra hours, the pop-up at the Sounders game, scarfs up everybody? Um, we'll be gauging success by, can we get shots into arms? And can we do it equitably and quickly? We now don't, you know, we, I thought the tide would turn later in May, that we'd have more supply. But because of the president's actions, we now have you know, supply enough for anybody who wants to get vaccinated. Again, the secretary himself played a role in that, as did our congressional delegation. So the real test is going to be getting people vaccinated. As, as Executive Constantine said, this is a race now between vaccinations and the virus, and we got to make sure vaccinations win. They're not just our road to recovery and reopening. They're one of the things we can finally do where we have some control. Because for the last year and a half, we have been at the peril of the virus, having to change the dials because of it. Now we have that control. So just urging everyone again, get vaccinated, but we are not out of the woods. Please continue to wear your mask. Don't have the large gatherings and make sure you keep distance. And if you're 20 to 35 years old, get a group of you, sign up, go get vaccinated. Um, do it together because we'd rather see many more youth vaccinated than the high numbers that we're seeing getting sick. Thank you much, everybody, for everything.